There are five disciplines in the clinical laboratory. There's chemistry, hematology, microbiology, histology, and transfusion medicine. Now these would be just words to you if you didn't get a chance to see a clinical laboratory. So we're now going to take a field trip over to Mount Sinai Hospital in Toronto where you'll be able to see a working clinical laboratory. Mount Sinai is one of about 20 sites that we use uh, where we assign students in the clinical phase of their training. They have always been very supportive of the program and of the students who we send to them for the clinical phase of their education. Now we're in the biochemistry department. Biochemistry is perhaps the most highly automated portion of the laboratory. Now there are instruments which will receive the samples, take the patient's identity from barcode, they'll take the caps off the tubes, they'll remove the, scent, the sample that's required, put the caps back on the instruments. Each one of these little hubs does a slightly different job. When we get further along, this is where all the samples come for staging and for archiving. If there's anything wrong with the samples, the instrument knows that. It can tell you how much serum or blood is in a tube, it can tell you if the label's correct, it can tell you if there's anything inconsistent. And then we come to the neat part, which is all these little chases here. The sampling machine sends the samples to either hematology for analysis or to the chemistry analyzer. At this point, all of the samples that have come through the system are staged. If there's anything wrong with the sample, it comes out here. These instruments are so smart they can figure out if there's not enough sample in the tube or if there's any kind of a misidentification. Once the sample is deemed to be acceptable, then it is sent along the traces here, these chases, to either an analyzer for all of the chemical tests or for some with an immunological basis. In chemistry, the primary sample is serum. We're looking for hormones or uh, elements like sodium or potassium or dissolved gases, that kind of thing. Um, for example, this is the department that would determine a diabetic's blood sugar level. Or if your doctor were interested in what your cholesterol is, this is the kind of analyzer that would do the work. Very, very highly automated. And a lot of technicians and technologists are required to keep every section of this chain moving along. Now we've moved on to the hematology laboratory. In the hematology laboratory, we're studying blood cells, red cells, white cells, and platelets. And this technologist is looking down a microscope, studying a film or a smear that has been made of a sample of a patient's blood. And he will look at and evaluate all of the cells that are on that film, and then make a report for the patient's doctor. We're still in hematology. This instrument does coagulation testing. Sometimes patients have bleeding disorders. The technologist who operates this instrument would do tests to determine exactly what the bleeding order was caused by and how the patient might be treated uh, is the doctor's responsibility when he gets the results. Like many other instruments in the laboratory, this testing is very highly automated. In hematology, we're really only working with blood samples and uh, the technologists are protected from any hazards that are in the blood by the fact that these, uh, there's a plate over the tubes here. The techno technologists would all wear gloves and do everything they can. We treat every specimen as if it were potentially harmful. Before the slide gets to the microscope, it has to be prepared by either an instrument or a technician technologist and then it has to be stained. And this instrument does all of the staining of all of the samples that would be prepared in a day. This, here's a sample that's coming through right now. Here we see a couple of blood samples going down the track and eventually they will go to a particle counter. A particle counter counts the number of red blood cells and the number of white blood cells and the number of platelets. These instruments are so smart they can even tell you how big the cells are and pretty much what they are. All normal samples would be reported out as normal and only the abnormal ones would have a special slide made.
to be stained and then examined under the microscope. Again, this is a very safe procedure because the technologist isn't in contact with the blood. A lot of our analyzers are very, very closely designed to protect us from hazards that we might face in our day-to-day -day work. Right now, I'm standing in a microbiology lab. And in this area of the lab, uh, we take a variety of samples from patients. Uh, for example, your doctor might collect a throat swab, or you might contribute a urine specimen or a stool specimen. We might take a body fluid uh, from spinal fluid, for example. We might take a sample of blood. And we would plant that onto some very sophisticated growth medium designed that any bacteria that were causing an infection would be able to grow on that media. And then we can identify it and tell the doctor not only what the name of the organism is, but what antibiotics would be best to cure you or to kill the organism in your body. Now I have in my hand here a sample of blood agar, one of the most useful media that we have. And the organisms you can see are growing there on the plate. Each one of those is probably millions of different little organisms, little germs you might call them, microorganisms to me. And each one is made up of a lot of different, uh, or each lump represents a separate colony of, of uh, organism. We use different kinds of media. This particular one is used to grow the kinds of organisms that you would find in a urine sample or in a stool sample. Microbiologists work with a lot of different samples and you very quickly get used to the idea that some of them are easier to smell than others. Also in microbiology, we might look at uh, trying to grow some viruses. We don't do that as part of the Michener program. It's a very specialized laboratory and we uh, would also perhaps do some parasitology looking for the kinds of one cell or multiple cell parasites that would cause diarrhea, particularly in more tropical countries. Here we are in the histotechnology laboratory, sometimes called a pathology lab or a histology lab. The instruments that you see here are called microtomes. And using a very sharp knife on the microtome, which would fit in right about there, we uh, take very thin slices of tissue. The tissue comes from either a person at surgery or from um, an autopsy. And we make a very thin slice and then stain it by a number of different methods so that a pathologist can look at the stain smear and uh, determine whether the tissue is normal or abnormal. And this technique would be used to determine whether someone had cancer or had a perfectly healthy piece of tissue. Now before we get the blocks onto the microtomes, they have to be, the tissue has to be fixed and processed and embedded into a mold and then it's cut on, on this, uh, this particular instrument. Once it's cut and stained, then uh, it can be um, cover slipped and it's ready for the pathologist to view. Here we are in the blood transfusion laboratory, sometimes called transfusion science or transfusion medicine. And what we're looking at here is a blood bank. And this is the special refrigerator that stores blood that the hospital would get from the Canadian Blood Services. And blood is given to patients who either lose blood during a, a hemorrhage or after a car accident, something like that, or if the person is anemic, not making quite enough red blood cells. So the blood all comes over to the hospitals from volunteer donors who have given it to the Canadian Blood Services. And then the, the technologists in the department prepare the blood for a patient who needs it. The procedure is called a cross match. First you have to take uh, the patient's blood group and match it with a donor blood group. Uh, a lot of the testing done in this department is still done manually. There are some now semi-automated methods to help us manage the large work the large volume of work or workflow, but the standard still is a unit of blood to a patient who needs it. Wherever you go in a clinical laboratory, you'll find someone sitting in front of a computer. A lot of our systems are highly automated. All of our information systems, especially in the larger hospitals, are totally computerized. It keeps better track of the computer records of patients' data than we can do ourselves. And computers don't usually make mistakes unless we make them for them. This technologist is in the area where she would be able to do a cross match, as I was describing a few minutes ago, for a patient who needed blood. You see centrifuges, the computer terminal, and a lot of little vials and tubes go into this department. This is one of my favorite parts of Mount Sinai's lab. It's 
shows a lot of the historical instruments. Maybe I feel more comfortable with them because I've been around them for a long time. At this point of the tour, I want to talk about what it's like to be a laboratory technologist. One thing you must be is a very good team player. You need to be able to work with other people in highly stressful situations. Another thing you need to do is to be able to read and analyze and solve problems. When problems come up, you never have time to think about it. You have to be able to know your equipment or your test procedure so well that you can just adapt. Uh, a lot of questions that you'll have relate to employment opportunities and salary. A medical laboratory technologist, newly graduated, starts off making about $45,000 a year. There are lots of employment opportunities. Right at the moment, we're predicting that there will be a shortfall of properly trained technologists to work in either clinical laboratories, like the one we've just seen, or in a private medical laboratory. Other opportunities for advancement include positions in sales, positions in education, like the one I have, um, research, and there are some technologists who work directly with patients. Normally, we don't have a lot of patient contact, but some technologists go into things like infection control and microbiology and they, uh, they deal with patients and nurses in the wards of the hospital. If you have any other questions about your uh, application to the Michener Institute, please feel free to contact Student Services or if you like you can get in touch with me directly through Student Services. We hope that you will make the Michener part of your future education and remember our motto, best experience, best education.